Hello everybody and I hope you're having a fantastic day and in this video I'm going to be talking about the new monster Archangel Michaelia that just came out in this new treasure spawn. Okay, so whenever you see or like you hear in the news that there's like a tornado warming or that global warming is increasing, this is because people don't know how to stop using this monster. As you can see right here, this monster does an ability power of 205 times. This is one of the heaviest hitting monsters I can think of or remember I at least possible this is probably definitely in the top five of the most heavy hit of monsters in the game right now this does over without the ability power scalable increase without that without that i'm talking about this does a total ability power of a freaking thousand a thousand ability power that's how much total ability power this monster does so this is definitely one of the heaviest hitting monsters in the game right now stronger than Kyrot. Ky tor billion is stronger than Kyrot, and this is stronger than tor billion so it's stronger than both of those like i wouldn't say easily but by at least a hundred and something ability power all hands down and it's, it's just insane and if that isn't enough the uh, Magic attack and attack buff limits get increased by 40% and with the attack and magic attack increase it fills in the attack buffs so if you need regular buff of like attack and magic attack this monster does that right away and fills in the buff limit that it just made too on top of it so it fills in the regular limit and then it fills in its own buff limit all in one go super strong monster pretty much can be used in any scenario or any situation especially in more of like guild battles and player versus players now keep in mind when it comes to guild battles you will be probably dealing with karma so you want to strategize and you might be dealing with balancing as well so all that 120 percent magic attack and attack can go away just like that so you want to make sure you strategize also on top of that as well but anyways this can be used pretty much in anything let me go over its abilities though. Ability power 100 heals the HP of all allies. This is a super strong heal, but this is the problem is it's only one heal. Um, usually when it comes to monsters and their healing abilities, they would heal and then add a continuous heal. If anything, I would prefer a continuous heal of like 20% over just one straight up heal because what if you like heal right and as soon as you heal like the enemy team like has a heavy hitting move or like it's player versus enemy and then the monster does like a percentage move and just takes down no matter how much defense or anything you have a certain amount of hp it would suck it really would it's only one heal so right after you heal that's it no more healing whatsoever you got to get a cleric you got to do something else or it's not going to work out that's what i don't like about the healing though just a heal is better than nothing so i'm honestly not complaining about the heal at all i just rather have a continuous heal so like i said it increases its own like the regular buff limit for just the regular attack and magic attack buff the one where you see like the sword and wand and it has like a number is usually 80 percent but since this one is increasing it by 40 it could go up to 120 and that's what it exactly does it increases the magic attack and attack by 100 percent 120 percent so it increases its own buff limit and then fills in for the buff limit it does it all in one a multitasking monster and fun for the whole family on top of it it casts 30 percent elevation on all allies for 60 seconds this can be I would say more useful and probably dual rooms and coliseums more than anything maybe guild battles depending if like if you're not planning on going to crystal assault this right here would be useful like if you're just trying to build up defenses and all that stuff this would be useful because you could put like nullifies in your main slot what elevation does is it increases the um activation chance for the stuff in your main slot so if you like add like uh if i could show you right here if you add like nullifies in your main slot you can increase the progress of those by 30 percent so that way you'll be taking literally probably like no damage and they would be attacking you so while you're taking no damage they're pretty much filling up your use and gotcha for free and all that stuff so like that that type of ability can be useful in like dual rooms coliseums definitely and guild battles depending on the situation and then on top of it, this is the first time this buff, I think this is a completely brand new buff, Cast Blessing. This recovers 50 costs, increases max HP by 100%, nullifies status alignments and unity damage reduction effects, reduces cooldown times by 50% and recovers 20% of max HP every 5 seconds on your character for 60 seconds. And the nice thing about 
Each and every one of those individual buffs is they all work with hero. That's right, they all work with hero. And I'm not sure if it's going to count as like the full blown blessing, but everything blessing gives, right? works with hero it stacks with hero how do i know this it's because i have right here children's day yashimaru and what yashimaru does is increase your cost recovery speed remove status alignments it does the continuous heal right here and it cast hero so i've cast hero on myself and i've managed to get cost recovery speed up and continuous heal in one monster so that's how i know that if not all, most of what Blessing will give will stack with Hero. So Blessing really stacks with anything in the freaking game. So that's pretty cool right there. It does not, on the flip side, nullify debuffs. So that's kind of something that sucks because if you get debuffs, it's just going to destroy you. And sometimes debuffs can easily be applied to you depending on the current situation. So Hero is a lot better of a buff, but it's nice because if anything... You could stack hero with blessing it might be a bit of a hard thing to do because they're both like 60 seconds now if they were both 120 seconds it would be completely easy but they're both buffs that only last for 60 seconds so maybe you only have like one for 20 seconds and then the other one's gonna be like 60 seconds or something like that but just in case like you know they add like a cast all whether it's blessing or hero you can actually stack these with each other and if you can stack these almost everything in blessing can be stacked with hero so it's really nice to have um i choose hero over blessing though because of the debuffs especially you're like during guild battles like if you want something that really keeps you going and balanced hero is the thing it nullifies buffs debuffs status alignments now buffs type of kind of sucks to be fairly honest but if you had a field buff it's also going to increase even more i think it only works with field buffs buff wise any other buffs in the game don't work with hero i believe besides hero itself <laughs> but yeah hero nullifies debuffs as well so when you're dealing with crystals that do like balancing or like karma and stuff like that that gets nullified by hero unlike blessing over here and maybe you want to deal with monsters maybe you're dealing with monsters that you need to kill right away because if you don't kill them right away they might do some deadly moves that screw up the whole team all types of nasty stuff status alignments debuffs uh healing itself uh making sure your cost recovery is super slow or whatever type of difficult monster you're dealing with debuffing is gonna be sometimes depending on the situation very brutal for your team so that's why i would per personally recommend hero over blessing blessing is a really nice buff regardless it recovers a full 50 cost increases max hp by 100 percent has that continuous heal and reduces cooldown times so it's a really nasty buff but um it had doesn't nullify debuffs so it's a little less on the um buff list but it's definitely in like the top five i think it's like i would consider it better than awakening maybe better than awakening i'm not exactly sure it's it's either like right under awakening or right above awakening in my perspective so definitely this is a really nice monster to have this monster can be really used in any situation whether you want to use it in guild battles you want to use it in player versus enemy or you want to use it in Colosseum and Dual Rooms. The reason for Colosseum and Dual Rooms is this is one of the heaviest hitting monsters in the game, so you could probably, depending on the situation, one hit KO the enemy team. On top of it, it's also increasing your magic attack and attack, so you're going to get even more of a boost when it comes to using this monster. Not that a 1000 ability power isn't enough, it's also going to buff itself, so it's going to do even more damage and increase the buff limit of how much you can buff yourself, so you're getting a 40% extra attack and magic attack to do devastating damage to the enemy team while this monster activates with its 1000 ability power so this monster is really 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 heavy hitting on top of that it casts elevation so if like if you use this in coliseum or door rooms and the enemies didn't die from the heavy hit you did like the global warming you caused in unison league just for 10 seconds or the tornado warning you cost <laughs> then you got elevation and if you have like nulls in your main slot like the nullify physical and magical you could just be like it's boosted by 30 percent so it's going to be harder for the enemy to kill you because your nullify physical magical damage will start proccing a lot more often and because of that you're just not going to be taking damage and they're not going to be doing jack while you might be killing them and, you know all this fancy smash and then like the magic attack and attack buff right here and the blessing these can be used in guild battles when it comes to crystal assault you could really mess up the team in crystal assault or perhaps elevation can help when you're not in crystal assault or like in when you're in player versus enemy having strong buffs like these can really help out so this is an overall 
very good monster to have. I'm not going to say it's super top tier, but this is like in the very, very, very good list so far when it comes to monsters and can be used in really any situation to be fairly honest. And it has awakening just like its sister Archangel Ariel. So definitely a really good monster to have. Um, I wouldn't say it's still worth how much it is, but it's definitely more of a treasure spawn by far monster than this smiling maiden over here. I'm not complaining that they have this though, because this gives us a break in time to actually increase our gear score when they add crappy monsters like these. Well, it's not exactly crappy, but for it's uh how much it is, it's kind of crappy. This is actually a treasure spawn monster. But on the flip side, if you're not going for this monster in the spawn, I definitely do not recommend doing this spawn because that's literally the only thing that's even worth for. As you look right here, nothing else is worth ever grabbing unless you're going for cosmetics in the treasure spawn except for the monster itself. It literally offers nothing else in the spawn. The metal count is not fair to be fairly honest, so this monster is going to be something hard to obtain to be fairly honest. The summoning scrolls, if you're trying to do the jackpot and you think you might get a summoning scroll, summoning scroll rates are really low. I'm not going to say mythical, but they're extremely low, so the chance of you getting a summoning scroll is, I wouldn't say zero, but you are very not likely to get a summoning scroll at all. There is no rates in the gear spawn for the monster whatsoever. In fact, they probably don't have nearly any rates for the monster in the gear spawn whatsoever. So even though there is a chance to obtain it, the chance is nearly mythical. I'm talking like probably like 0.01 or something like that chance to actually obtain the monster. And it's just ridiculous. So the metals aren't fair. The chance of getting in the jackpot is... Is probably the best rate you will be able to get <laughs> if you can't then you're gonna have to get the metals because it's not gonna be in the gear spawn whatsoever that's treasure spawn is literally oriented orient rate oriented orientated around <laughs> sorry about that this monster if you're not going for this monster there's absolutely no reason whatsoever you should be doing this and the metal count isn't fair to be fairly honest so with that being said, I hope this helped out, and I will see you in the next video. This is the Azra. I'm out. Peace.